Hi, uh, Romesh Shivastu here, Editor in Chief, Site C. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Please do subscribe to us for the HR news, for HR updates, and conversation with the top class CHRs. Agenda for today's discussion is the OKR. I think uh, January is the month when most of the companies they start their uh, appraisal cycle. But performance appraisal and review, they are outdated now. And the focus of companies that uh, have shifted towards the performance development, performance enhancement, performance evolvement. So in this regard, some of the companies uh, have started the OKR, that is stands for uh, objective and key results uh, for the performance development and uh, monitoring. So as uh, it has two component objective, so under this uh, objective, uh, you can set the organizational goals team goals and uh, even the individual goals and another component that's the key results you can monitor the performance you can see the progress to discuss in detail on this uh, uh, pertinent subject we have two eminent hr leaders let me introduce mr vikas k khokha mr vikas is uh, head human resources with the dhamka agritech another eminent hr leader is uh, ms gargi banerji she is a head talent, OD, and uh, learning and development. She is working with the Jalfa in UAE. So, because if I come to you first, so how do you see what is the OKR and how uh, it is different from the other widely used uh, techniques like uh, KPI and MBO? So, a uh, very interesting question and, uh, you know, uh, brings me to the perspective of why we needed this change, you know. Uh, eventually, you know, when you see an organization achieving its objective, the objectives are dependent on all that people have to do, you know. So uh, what we saw and we started observing that organization is unable to achieve whatever organization was this time to achieve while people were achieving more than 100% or 100%. You could see a gap in terms of what people are being measured on versus what organization has been measured on. And I think that was the first trigger to bring in, uh, you know, the concept of OKRs, or we call it a COT, which is critical operating tasks. Now, uh, a very important factor of how is it different from a KPI, because eventually a person should be very clear in terms of what one needs to deliver. Now, uh, if you look at a typical, I'll take an example of a sales leader, right? A sales leader should achieve revenue, should achieve uh, profitability, should achieve the market share. I mean, I'm, I'm talking of broad KPIs of a sales leader. Now, when we looked at a sales leader, he was still doing that. While we could rate him at 100%, 110%, while organization at the organization level was unable to receive the complete hygiene, that means were the collections done in time, was his team consistently performing and growing year on year. The growth measurement every year was as per the market or not. So there were a lot of qualitative factors that we started looking at for a sales leader, not only looking at what numbers that he do. Where we saw typically sales getting trapped more was on the numbers, measurement of numbers. While we saw non-sales, getting trapped on uh, regular transactional activities, right? Now, as a human resource leader or as a finance leader, you need to work towards organization's profitability, not look at those micro level transactions. So moving micro to macro is a very important component which OKR has brought. Secondly, moving from, you know, individual level to organization level it brought. Third very important factor which came in was that uh, when you look at an OKR, it doesn't end with your financial year. It just continues to the next year. So next year OKRs are linked to last year's OKRs. It can't be that one year is isolated and next year you start doing that work again. While people who were using scorecards slash KPIs were using that tool of sitting together and then defining how year looks like and redefining that. While OKRs just carry forward, they get fine-tuned towards future. So what organizations are also linking OKRs is very effectively, is, I'm, I'm talking of Dhanuka, looking at 
Dhanuka 2026, how does it look like for us, all leaders? And then we work backwards in terms of how 25 looks, how 24 looks, how 23 looks, and how is 21 looking now? So uh, 22 is looking now. So I think a clear linkage to a long-term goal of the organization is effectively achieved through an OKRs. And last but not the least, I would say that people qualified or you know, rather than quantified parameters, there are a lot of qualified parameters which bring in organization's effectiveness through OKRs very effectively compared to a, a you know a quantified scorecard. Garu would like to add here something. How do you see the importance of OKR? Uh uh, th thanks uh, to Vikas uh, for this uh, very uh, simplistically putting things uh, into perspective and that to a very, very practical and relatable way. Along with that, uh, in, in, my, in my own experience and managing things uh, and looking into how finance and HR both are partnering together nowadays in, in major organizations to actually move the, move the piece of the puzzle of, of doing it together simultaneously consistently and getting the, the buy-in of the business stakeholders. It is a super example that uh, uh, I have uh, done five, I'm rating five, uh, but my department, my team, and uh, forget the organization that is too far. Uh, uh, we It's okay, fine, but I am rating five. Me and my team are rating five, you know. And this is the time when we are into that negotiation and into that uh, mood management, into that recency bias and so on and so forth. Of course, OKR gives uh, that kind of clarity uh, towards uh, the way we want to look into things. And along with that, uh, of course, it is, it is measurable because what is actually uh, measured that can only be progressed. Otherwise, it is all in the, in the PowerPoint or, or it is all in the boardroom. It, it doesn't get implemented. So yes, the, the measurement part of the OKR is something which which fascinates uh, the the success of this particular uh, uh, in, uh, input in the larger organization aspect. Yeah, that is what I, I thought I would add on. Yeah, so Gargi, how uh, it is implemented? What the uh, methodology is here for this? Great question. Actually, the implementation is is uh, is a, is a two way traffic. You know. Uh, first implementation is definitely by the process, by the concept, uh, linking it uh, together with the larger goal, how 2025 looks like, what is the strategic roadmap uh, for 2025, 24, 23, so on and so forth, and how in 21, 22, we probably started that journey. That's absolutely fine. Uh, the most critical element in, in, this kind of, uh, in this kind of an change or implementation is how you change the mindset or the behavior at the back of your mind. And that of your mind does not only restrict the leadership or does not only restrict uh, the, the managers or the middle managers, no. If it restricts there, then it is not implemented. It is a good theory. It is a good concept. Uh, I have done a couple of things in my present um, uh, assignment and my previous assignment, wherein uh, we have actually looked into the, the vision the more than the vision, the mission of the of the of the short term or the long term goal of the organization for every function, take out two to maximum three very very critical pertinent uh, pertinent KPI or objective which that function is trying to achieve along with of course the organization KPI. I can give you an example of my function. For, for us, in from 2021 onwards for Julfar, it was very essential that we are going to be linked with all kinds of employee decisions that is linked with the performance management system. So having that vision, 2020 PMS we launched some way, then 2021, 22, we, I recently concluded, I'm, I, or rather I'm on the verge of conclusion and so on and so forth. And we enhanced, agreed on a couple of, couple of key deliverables into that journey. Similarly for finance, we thought of increasing the EBITDA uh, of the organization from a, from a mere 4% to a nine or 10% EBITDA on a, on, a, on a structured way. And of course, then you, you link in the, the manufacturing, you link in the sales, you link in the operations mm -hmm. to, to have that clarity. On that note, what recently we have started doing since last one or two, uh, one and a half years is actually having a joint meeting 
for all those stakeholders, not only at the level of directors or the head or the managers, but actually the key subject matter expert level as well. Because those are the people who are actually moving the pieces. And there are a lot of uh, discussion in terms of having the entire uh, scope of understanding. There are a lot of discussion having the challenges put on the, on the paper rather than on the email that I am not supporting you, keep it aside, it's fine. No, let us bring it on the, onto the table and let's join our hands together to solve it. And then obviously finding, that was one of my input to find the OKR task force. Because until and unless you do not have the commitment or an accountability of one or two critical people out of every function, this puzzle is not going to move. So this is how we implement it. And we, have, we are in that journey actually in Julfar for doing that. And our finance and HR is actually working very closely in moving this together. Yeah. So because uh, the goal setting, that is very important. That is, we talked about the OKR or any other technique. So how do you see how, how to set the goals? Suppose if I talk about the uh, your organizational goals with the human resource department. So how would you uh, set the goals for the, this OKR? So uh, it's very important, Ramesh, to see that uh, the goals are not function dependent. And that's why, you know, you sit with a strategic OKR team in one room and there's a workshop where you see that what are your core organization objectives and you see as a leader, you do not see it as an HR leader, you do not see it as a finance leader, you see it as a leader and establish that this is where we need to achieve. You know, this is what we need to achieve. And where we need various, various components to come in, like they could be a people component, they could be a finance component, they could be a supply chain component, where those components are required and you establish those respective components separately, owned by each of the leaders in their own specialized functional areas, while each leader understands the final goal, I think is a first starting point. If you do not invest into that, and straight away get into their exercise, then again, it be, you may call it an OKR, it becomes a KPI, right, eventually. And that's where the fine line is. So what I saw the success factor is sitting in that room for three days, completely disconnected on your device and spending a lot of time amongst each other to be able to establish that first craft is most important. Then I think going down the line, cascading the information, to your respective team members and to see that there's a consistency in terms of communication. Now, I'm just taking one example where I looked at the finance talking of, say, uh, your top line, your bottom line. Uh, where did finance talk about the customers which are not paying in time or customers which are bad debts? You know, how do you crack that? How do you ensure there's a basic hygiene in what kind of customers you get. So, you know, a finance leader talking about distributors, an HR leader really, really talking of how many headquarters, and I'm, I'm talking of headquarters from our language, that how many places it is vacant for three months. That means there's a three months of gap. And how much of an average time is consumed in filling that, right? So effectively talking of business you know directly linked to your brings in more effectiveness and your live enthusiasm of your function into that while when you do that cascade down the line you need to break the organization into top and bottom so when you look at top leadership it really talks of a broader perspective and when you go down the line things go a little bit more micro and transactional that will be a natural way to progress it but eventually this is a step towards goal setting when you want to deal with a concept called OKR. So, Gargi, um, as uh, we discussed, and uh, the organizational goal, then it is a distributed to function-wise, can be distributed to the function-wise. Uh, so, how do you see, what is your opinion into this? How we can see, easily set the goals? It is all, yes, it is, uh, it is always uh, very nice to have uh, an organization goal. But many a times what happens that uh, while doing the organization goals, uh, we only look at uh, the, the short term goal. And uh, more critically for us is everybody 
if if not if not completely uh, spoken about or if not uh, many a times uh, not addressed properly they can think that my transactional day to day job is what is actually my kpi or what is my actual work and nothing more the job role only demands that the challenge or or the or the opportunity both in 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 this way for for us from hr is to show them of the the real bigger picture because everybody wants to be honestly in the comfort zone okr uh, or kpi or the right objective or the organizational objective sets you in with a purpose uh, so the point that is coming that uh, the purpose is very critical for for us to to relate to and on that purpose as vikas is saying that uh, uh, let us have that without any device without anything we we brainstorm we are together for two two to three days and understand uh, how we drive the organization in my present role we somehow did that exercise actually and we have actually done a 2030 vision with that 2030 vision uh, how we are going to take it forward on a on a on a yearly basis or a, or i i prefer the two quarter three quarters or four quarters basis rather than a year because that gives you a, a little bit of more touch to the kpi or to the okr whatever you say and when you do that we have identified five main pillars of our business not only identified we are going to enhance that on those five main pillars the interdependence of the entire function of all the all the uh, concerned stakeholders are also defined on that interdependence this year we are going to drive the actual actual okr uh, for not only for the main five kpis or four kpis but i'm going to plan something extra which is we create a quarterly review mechanism of the okr otherwise you know you are everything is there but if there is no review or you you cannot actually you are not on the ground so all those things are that is going to be going to be like interlinked uh, on the success uh, of this journey which we have taken yeah so uh, because as you are talking about that uh, it helps in enhancing the employee performance so how do you see how it helps in uh, enhancing the employee performance and uh, does it also help uh, uh, in employee engagement part because please uh, so let me go into first uh, the part of employee development and i think i have seen the needle moving there uh, when we started developing okrs we saw people's perspective going broad so i'm i'm saying that cross functional orientation started dropping in and when i look at my delivery to finance or finance looks at its delivery to supply chain or a sales it is not an inter department delivery but it is delivery to the final goal and i think uh, we worked on creating that promises we, we we recreated the word called promise and promise you know you need to honor your promise yeah, there's no way you cannot honor your own promise you can set another promise against your first promise but still honor that so i think somewhere the the language uh, the orientation of cross function really helped in getting a broader perspective in leader that was first way to develop second okrs by the subject on the design is about your ability to deal with your team right and you don't go and micromanage each team members kpis right it's your pr prerogative as a leader to develop that amongst your team create a change management within your team so that each component in your team understands you know what they are supposed to deliver so i think that team management and managing that whole piece of okr across your team also helps you deliver as a leader right your own accountability and so called promise i could see that happening very smoothly romesh and i i felt that uh, leaders need to have okr orientations to be able to develop for future a uh, third very important part uh, was the, i think this is the most critical part is uh, when you look at upgrading yourself from uh, those you know you have a hard soft side and hard side 
Hard side is easy to measure. Soft side is difficult to measure. Softer side is sometimes gets very, very cumbersome. Sometimes gets very compromised. And I'm not getting to exactly balance scorecard, but balancing the two sides of hard and soft, right? I think OKRs beautifully does that and uh, brings in that qualitative and quantified aspect for any leader to think through the two sides of brains. One is the objective numerical brain, other is the creative brain. So I think that starts amalgamating very well. So in these forms, I see OKRs doing immense amount of uh, development. Now, second part of the question was engagement. Uh, OKRs by nature, are developed by creating uh, you know, a framework. Framework is designed and each leader is supposed to cascade it down the line. So the engagement for the leader to go down the line and engage team members is very high because each person knows the OKR is connected to the higher self and something that they are doing is contributing to the larger goal. So I think in that fashion, I could see people more engaged in line, but what needs to be done, Romesh, is Effective change management needs to be executed through small, small workshops so that people understand this. If you don't do that, eventually, you know, you'll end up people confusing whether it is a KPI or an OKR. So, Gargi, because the implementation of OKR, that is very important. So, again, I would like to check with you that uh, what the challenges you face uh, in uh, OKR implementation and uh, what are, what is your advice uh, for the uh, HR leaders, those uh, okay. who are looking uh, for the implementation of the OKR. Okay, yeah, Gargi, yeah, please. Yeah, the challenges are definitely two-way. One challenge is, uh, what is it for me? Why to do it? If, uh, I'm, I'm doing well in any case. And That's the my mindset. Manager is happy. My manager is happy. I am doing well. I'm managing my um, the other network. Um, and 10 years, I'm doing the same, uh, madam, in the same company, company is growing. Okay, fine. That is one challenge. And that, that remains, I think, universal. Uh, the second challenge is definitely mm, the, the, the disengagement at uh, the apparent disengagement at the level of, even at the level of leadership, you know, because many a times uh, what you see and what actually gets done, that there is a challenge and there is a difference. That's absolutely normal and it's very natural as well. The point where, and of course, there is a challenge of, as Vika said, a challenge of uh, confusion. Uh, if I if I do not communicate well, yeah, I mean, uh, if the all the stakeholders do not communicate well and regularly, the confusion remains and confusion then becomes rumor rumor then becomes something else that's absolutely fine in in large enterprise it it, it also happens the critical aspect of implementing a change management is definitely definitely trust and communication and that is what is something which is which is very critical for us uh, to drive and to establish many people can talk uh, that if if i fail i i don't take the, accept this challenge because the fear of failure is there if I fail, uh, my uh, my rating will be less or my reputation will go down or something, so on and so forth. As this is change management, I personally feel, and we have implemented also in my present and the previous uh, assignments, that the psychological safety is very critical for implementing any kind of change management. Unit. And for that, the leadership communication for the department and having that particular voice that it's okay to fail even at a, at a level, but it is it is critical to identify and how quickly we can rebound on that failure, if at all, and then we move forward. That message is something which gives a lot of value at across every level of this kind of defined uh, change management practices. This is point number one. Point number two is, is definitely the, the role of the CEO uh, and the role of the CHRO is very critical to actually have an ongoing, uh, very structured, integrated approach between the other chief officers. Because uh, the supply chain, the operations can feel, okay, oh, they don't sell. Uh, say, uh, commercial never sells what I produce. Commercial says, okay, you do not produce what I actually want to sell. Marketing thinks that opportunity is somewhere else. 
So this kind of integration is something which is very critical uh, for implementation and having the momentum going across the top level and definitely uh, HR leaders have a role to play to continuously having that, keep the warmth of that concept moving right. in the mind of the people. Yeah. Because I think uh, we tried to touch on the important points right through the OKR. Still, if uh, you think anything is uh, uh, not discussed and it is important, so would you like to share something like a concluding remark here? So, um, uh, Ramesh, a very relevant point you brought uh, right now, and I think but we have only two minutes. We have only two minutes. Yeah, yeah. So quickly, I'll talk about the culture of the organization, our values. I have tried incorporating that value part in checking the behaviors of people. I think this is something which is also very critical and a focus needs to be driven on that. Uh, lately, we started talking of mental wellness. We're talking of some of the very uh, critical aspects of employee well-being. Uh, you know, uh, how we could incorporate some of these uh, in our day-to-day -day working on OKRs is also very important eventually to grow and develop an organization that you need. Last but not the least, talent development and talent management, you know, is an organization subject. It's not an HR subject. So I think each leader has to co-own that as a part of the OKR, especially the leaders who are carrying large teams and critical positions. So some of these aspects, you know, Ramesh, really need to be part of that science for us to take it forward. Last but not the least, we are also talking of today diversity inclusion as one of the important components in developing a culture of the organization where people bring authenticity. Now, again, you know, getting them on the board in terms of when you're doing performance conversations is very critical, you know, because you can't segregate these things just for fun. So I think somewhere that amalgamation is very important. And I think as an HR leader, you need to be a woodpecker to keep knocking the door till it happens. Absolutely, because quickly, I uh, would like to add something, Ngarki, as a concluding remark. Of course, um, uh, the change agent, uh, um, if I talk about the outpicker, uh, nice to look at and very, very persistent. Uh, so, of course, yes, uh, change doesn't happen easily. And uh, in the process of this, uh, HR needs to also celebrate uh, through a culture of uh, change, through a building an organization culture and value, need to celebrate uh, those kind of uh, those kind of defined achievements uh, so that people people see, they visualize what success means and what kind of impact they bring onto the table when a simple project is driven by uh, by the concept or the or the or the passion of managing like an OKR. Those kind of things actually is a, is a few, huge spark uh, for for employee engagement and actually establishing this kind of concept uh, in, in the in the larger uh, right. manner. Right. So finally, uh, Vikas and Gargi, thank you for joining the conversation and uh, sharing your thoughts on the OKR. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks for your time, everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Gargi. Thanks, it was nice meeting you.